Jurinda and Juringo. Brothers Grimm. There was once an old castle in the middle of a large and thick forest, and in it an old woman who was a witch dwelt all alone. In the daytime she changed herself into a cat or a screech owl, but in the evening she took her proper shape again as a human being. She could lure wild beasts and birds to her, and then she killed and boiled and roasted them. If anyone came within 100 paces of the castle, he was obliged to stand still and could not stir from the place until she bade him be free. But whenever an innocent maiden came within this circle, she changed her into a bird and shut her up in a wickerwork cage and carried the cage into a room in the castle. She had about 7,000 cages of rare birds in the castle. Now, there was once a maiden who was called Jorinda, who was fairer than all the other girls. She and a handsome youth named Joringo had promised to marry each other. They were still in the days of betrothal and their greatest happiness was being together. One day, in order that they might be able to talk together in quiet, they went for a walk in the forest. Take care, said Joringo, that you do not go too near the castle. It was a beautiful evening. The sun shone brightly between the trunks of the trees into the dark green of the forest, and the turtle doves sang mournfully upon the young boughs of the birch trees. Jorinda wept now and then. She sat down in the sunshine and was sorrowful. Joringo was sorrowful too, that they were as sad as if they were about to die. Then they looked around them and were quite at a loss, for they did not know by which way they should go home. The sun was still half above the mountain and half set. Joringo looked through the bushes and saw the old walls of the castle close at hand. He was horror stricken and filled with deadly fear. Jorinda was singing. My little bird with the necklace red sings sorrow, sorrow, sorrow. He sings that the dove must soon be dead. Sing sorrow, sorrow. Juk, juk, juk. Joringo looked for looked for Jorinda. She was changed into a nightingale and sang jik, jik, jik. A screech owl with glowing eyes flew three times round about her and three times cried, to woo, to woo, to woo. Jorinda could not move. He stood there like a stone and could neither weep nor speak nor move hand or foot. The sun had now set. The owl flew into the thicket, and directly afterwards there came out of it a crooked old woman, yellow and lean, with large red eyes and a hooked nose, the point of which reached to her chin. She muttered to herself, caught the nightingale, and took it away in her hand. Joringo could neither speak nor move from the spot. The nightingale was gone. At last the woman came back and said in a hollow voice, Greeting, Zacchio. If the moon shines on the cage, Zacchio, let him loose at once. Then Joringo was freed. He fell on his knees before the woman and begged that she would give him back his Jorinda, but she said that she should never have her again. She said that he should never have her again and went away. He called, he wept, he lamented, but all in vain. Ah, what is to become of me? Joringo went away and at last came to a strange village. There he kept sheep for a long time. He often walked round and round the castle, but not too near it. At last he dreamt one night that he found a blood-red flower, in the middle of which was a beautiful large pearl, that he picked the flower and went with it to the castle, and that everything he touched with the flower was freed from enchantment. He also dreamt that by means of it he recovered his Jorinda. In the morning, when he awoke again, he began to seek over hill and dale if he could find such a flower. He sought until the ninth day, and then, early in the morning, he found the blood-red flower. In the middle of it, there was a large dewdrop, as big as the finest pearl. Day and night he journeyed with this flower to the castle, when he was within a hundred paces of it, he was not held fast, but walked on to the door. 
Joringo was full of joy. He touched the door with the flower and it sprang open. He walked in through the courtyard and listened for the sound of the birds. At last he heard it. He went on and found the room from which it came. And there the witch was feeding the birds in the 7,000 cages. When she saw Joringo, she was angry, very angry, and scolded and spat poison and gall at him. But she could not come within two paces of him. He did not take any notice of her, but went and looked at the cages with the birds. But there were many hundred nightingales. How was he to find his Jorinda again? Just then he saw the old woman quietly take away a cage with a bird in it and go towards the door. Swiftly he sprang towards her, touched the cage with the flower and also the old woman. She could now no longer bewitch anyone, and Jorinda was standing there, clasping him round the neck, and she was as beautiful as ever. Jorinda and Joringo. Have a great day, everybody.